Okay, in this video we're going to talk about using the Intermediate Value Theorem and what the Intermediate Value Theorem is, so uh, let's get started. Um, so, if uh, f of x is continuous, so that's a big deal, it absolutely needs to be continuous, on the closed interval a, b, so it's going to include the endpoints a and b, it has to be continuous on that, um, and um, f of a is not equal to f of b, so uh, basically they can't be on a horizontal line. Um, either f of a could be bigger than f of b, or f of a could be less than f of b. It doesn't matter, they just can't be equal. Um, then, for all values between a, f of a and f of b, so m is actually a y value, so for all y values between f of a and f of b, um, we know that there exists some value um, in between a and b, so that's an x value, so some value c in between a and b. Um, the open interval, by the way, it can't be at A or at B, um, such that f of C is equal to M. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, it lets us prove a lot of things. So we can show that something exists. We don't necessarily know how to find it, um, but most of the time that's all we really need. So uh, just to give you kind of an idea of a picture of this, so we might have uh, f of A be less than f of B, and so M is some Y value in between. We can see that that horizontal line intersects the graph. Um, or it could go the other way where f of a is greater than f of b and there's still a y value. So continuity is a big deal. It's got to be continuous on that closed interval. Um, and you have to remember that the value of c is only really guaranteed to exist uh, on the open interval. Um, so uh, let's, let's do a problem. So let's say that f of x and g of x are continuous functions. So we need that to be true or this doesn't even apply. With f of negative 2 equals 5, f of 8 equals negative 4, g of negative 2 equals negative 4, um, and g of 8 equals 12. So what we want to do is we want to show that f of x equals g of x for some value of x between negative 2 and 8. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to take these points and somehow uh, combine them. So typically what I do in a problem like this is I actually define a new function. So I know f and g are continuous, so I'm going to define a new function uh, that I'm going to call h of x, and h of x is just going to be f of x minus g of x. And since f and g are continuous, I know that h of x is continuous, and I'm just going to state that right now, because I ultimately want to use the intermediate value theorem, and if I don't say that h is continuous, then I can't really justify using it. So I said h is continuous, um, now let's calculate some values. So uh, using what I know, and frequently this information is conveyed in a table rather than being given just discrete points, um, h of negative 2 I can calculate as f of negative 2 minus g of negative 2. Um, so that's going to be 5 minus negative 4, which is 9. And then I can calculate h of 8, which should be f of 8 minus g of 8, um, which, again, pulling from the problem, is going to be negative 4 minus 12, which is negative 16. So now the intermediate value theorem kind of comes in. So h of 8 is less than 0, which is less than h of negative 2. So it might not be obvious what I'm doing, but when you see this argument, um, you're going to want to kind of like take it to heart and be able to use it again, because it comes up sometimes. Even on the AP calculus exam, it comes up from time to time. So h of 8 is less than 0, is less than h of negative 2. Uh, therefore, by IVT, so there's where the intermediate value theorem comes in, h of x must be equal to 0 for some x on the open interval between negative 2 and 8, which is good. Because if that's the case, um, I know that f of x minus g of x must be equal to 0, because f of x minus g of x is h of x. And if that's the case, I know that f of x equals g of x just by adding g of x to both sides for some x between negative 2 and 8, which is what I was trying to prove. Uh, let's take a look at one more example. So let f be continuous with the values in the table. Um, we want to determine the minimum number of times that f of x equals 0 on the interval from 1 to 4. Uh, it's a closed interval, but it doesn't really matter. It could have been open because um, we know f of 1 and we know f of 4, and they're not 0. So let's see if we can do the problem. So since uh, f of x is continuous, so we're solving the problem, so we want to state what we need to be true. To use the intermediate value theorem, we need to state it's continuous. And now we got a lot going on. So I'm going to say f of 2 is less than 0 is less than f of 1. Uh, f of 2 is less than 0, which is less than f of 3. And 
f of 4 is less than 0, which is less than f of 3. Okay, so I've established three things. Uh, I know that f of x must equal 0 um, at least once on each of the intervals from um, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 4. And all of that is because of the intermediate value theorem. So if I don't say that, I haven't really justified it. But because of the intermediate value theorem, that must be true. So I've kind of answered the question. Like, I, it might be way more than these three times, um, but at minimum, it has to be at least three times. Um, and then I've answered the question. So uh, you might not be used to writing up answers that are like this. I'm going to box this just to show you that there's no point in really boxing this because the entire thing is your answer. It's not like you would just get three and put a box around it. The entire thing is your actual answer. Um, so you end up doing a lot of writing with these sorts of theorems, uh, but you just have to get used to that because as you delve into calculus, you're going to be doing this more and more. Uh, so that's the intermediate value theorem. Hope you found this helpful and uh, good luck.